Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is just a quick update, really, on all the thoughts that were going into getting an additional kit in here to get the heat down. And um, basically, the air conditioner was a, a non starter because one of its main functions is to get the humidity out of the air. Well, that would defeat the object. The swamp cooler or evaporative cooler was just too much of a faff. And quite honestly, for the sort of unit that would do the job, um, a bought unit, not a homemade one, would just cost too much. Um, and I was reminded by a viewer, via an email, of something I thought about doing some time ago. And I had a long conversation with a couple of people, including one um, whose grow, grow space I actually visited. Um, I think I even made a video a long time ago. Um, but basically it's the aluminium shade netting. It's a shade netting based on reflection. Um, so a lot of the light and heat doesn't get through the shade netting to hit the glass. And um, certainly the guy in question who's got a vast grow space, <laughs> something like about, I think it's about 30 meters by about six, it's, it, it's, hit, it's big. And his was a, a pit um, you know, a sunken uh, grow space, so not all of the grow space was above ground, steps to get down into it and everything. Um, but So basically I've ordered some of the aluminium shade netting. He reckoned that when he applied his, he got a drop of um, 5 or 6 degrees C immediately. You know, on a, on a bright sunny warm day, his temperature dropped down that much. And if I can achieve that, that's all I need. I just need to get away from that 30 degrees C down to 25 or or around that point and I'll be happy with that. Um, <clears throat> also it will mean if I can keep that temperature a little bit lower I'll be able to drop the um, thermostat for the inlet and the outlet fan um, simply because you know I'm trying to hold humidity so I'm allowing that temperature to get a bit higher than I like before those two units kick in otherwise I lose my humidity and and they don't you know <laughs> when they come on they don't cool that well quite honestly so the goal is to stop the heat getting in here in the first place and solve the problem that way so I'm going to give that a go I've ordered it um, don't know how long it will take to arrive coming from uh, Bonnie Scotland a company called Simply Controls um, they do uh, units you know, on an industrial scale as well as down to what the amateur sort of uh, grower might want. Um, I've seen them at shows, their equipment and their reputation is, is excellent, so uh, it should be good stuff. I had a look at getting some on eBay, but the pictures, it doesn't look like the right stuff, quite honestly. <laughs> so I thought, well, it might cost a little bit more from them, but I'd rather have what I know is going to be the right stuff. So that will be on its way and hopefully that will solve my heat issue. Which quite honestly is the only issue I've got left in here. And as we seem to be getting more drier, warmer sum summers, it's something that's you know it's just going to be around for a while if I don't solve it. So uh, yeah, we'll give that a go and see how that works. Um, if it works half as well as I expect, it'll still work good enough for in here. Um, so we'll try that. Um, I forgot to put this on video yesterday. This little uh, dendrobium's come out into bloom again. Um, it is. It's a cluster bloomer. It's Bolenianum. Bolenianum. Yeah. Um, so it grows in little cluster blooms, a bit like hibiki and those types of uh, dendrobiums. But the blooms on it are very tiny. Um, and it's quite a little colour changer because when it opens it's almost pure yellow and the red veining is very very faint and then as they are literally after a few days the red veining starts becoming more prominent and the colour fades from yellow to orange so you end up with a good orange colour with bright red veining and on the lip as well but they are small um, so uh, yeah I forgot to show that yesterday when I was uh, showing all the new stuff um, stuff to come relatively soon. Um, when I divided the Peter Comp, um, one of those divisions has got a spike on, that's coming on. The other one's for somebody else that hasn't got a spike on at the moment, but it is finally growing some roots. And this spike up here is my um, <coughs> Oncidium varicosum rogersii, 
which is a lovely oncidium, bright yellow, and the top part of the bloom is almost black. So it's quite an unusual bloom on that, and it looks like we're going to look very spaced out for an oncidium spike. Um, but it looks like we're going to have a few. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Probably about 10 blooms or something like that, which, um, you know, given some oncidiums, that's a relatively le low number. But for that one, that's a, that's a good spike. So uh, we've got those to come. There's other stuff coming on. The catatanti spike up the back here is um, going mad, if I can get the camera in round there. All the lower sections are branching now with um, multiple buds per branch. And the spike itself is now well, it's a good two foot long. So that, that should be a good show when that comes out. Um, not much else in bud at the moment. Oh, my little um, <coughs> uh, Dendrobium phalaenopsis type has just opened. And um, that is a much deeper colour than last time round. This is the Thai Angel. Now, last time that bloomed was in the winter, and it was a pink colour. Well, this time that's come out quite a deep purple. I don't know whether it's going to change colour as it goes along, but um, uh, you can see, see the stump of the spike there, that was the one that was open in the winter, and this time I've got two, off of the same cane, lower down, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's just, just literally opened overnight, that one, uh, more to come, um, yeah, quite attractive. Um, I've just had to dig my, my talk out. Um, not the um, Orchid Society talk, the one for the um, non-Orchid people. Um, I stored that away on my uh, external hard drive because that doesn't, doesn't get used that often. But I've got that talk to do on Monday. It's a very strange time for... Uh, <laughs> it's a 10 o'clock start, 10 o'clock in the morning. It's an, uh, uh, on a Monday. It's an unusual time for a group of people to meet. But th that's it, so uh, it be an early start for me. And um, I borrowed some plants off a friend. He's just come round with a box, box full of plants. There's a Paphiopedalum in bloom in there, a couple of Phalaenopsis. Um, there's a Miltonia in there. I'll take the um, Brassia along. What I'm looking for is examples, and I'll take this one now, it's opened as well, is examples of the sort of orchids you will find in a garden centre or, or you know or that type of place the generally avail readily available ones that the, the sort of things people that would buy probably on the spur of the moment a lot of the time you know um, not orchid collectors or orchid growers just people who want a house plant basically so uh, take a few sample plants along um, I'll probably take that little cattleya as well just to show a cattleya type plant because they'll grow in the home okay so yeah take a few plants along it's a half hour presentation um, followed by picking some plants up and chatting about them and you know I'll repot one do a demo of a repot um, yeah so that sort of thing that'd be quite enjoyable I hope they've got copious supplies of coffee at that flipping time of day but, uh, yeah, so that's coming up. That's Monday. Um, Orchid Society meeting tomorrow, and it will be my first one as a committee member. So I've got to go earlier than normal and um, sit through what will probably two be two hours of total boredom from my point of view. But um, I said I'd do it, so that starts tomorrow for the first time. Um, and then we'll go from there. Um, I'll apologise, I think, for my last video. It, it, it was one of the ideas that was put up from viewers about what my dream grow space would be like. And, um, well, I was asked, so I've done it. But I was sort of thinking back that, um, for a lot of people, that might be an incredibly boring video to listen to. <laughs> Especially as it's total fantasy. There's no way I'd ever have enough money to even think about starting a project like that. Plus, where I'm living at the moment, I wouldn't be allowed to do it. It's not my house, you know. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, it was just an idea. So, uh, anyway, I'll see you next time. That was uh, the um, giant brassier down here. Two of the spikes are already gone and the third one's going so uh, very soon that spike can come off and then it just becomes a normal oncidium type plant that can come up on a shelf so even though it's large it can be accommodated I've, I've, I seem to have acquired by hook or by crook quite a lot more shelf space now some of that is 
giving plants away, the last giveaway draw. Um, a couple have died, not many. Um, and quite a few got mounted at the repot stage. Quite a few of the Oncidium types actually got mounted and some of the Miltonias as well. So I've, I've got far less hanging space than I used to have, but nonetheless, I've got more shelf space. I mean, if, you know, if you sort of look around, these shelves aren't exactly crowded. The Catvia shelf is, but this one up here, you know, the plants are quite spaced out compared with what they used to be. And I mean, down here, there's only half the shelf being used. And the same down on this shelf, there's acres of space, so I've got shelf space. Obviously that'll have to go on a top shelf because of its height, but um, you know, if that big plant comes up here, then some of the smaller ones can go down there. So I've got space for, for a few large plants, because <laughs> I have got a few large plants. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, see you next time, thanks for dropping by, and um, I look forward to getting my aluminium shade netting. Um, it serves two purposes. First of all, being aluminium, it's shiny on the outside, it reflects away, yeah? So the light still goes through the holes like normal shade netting, but on the inside, apparently it's white, which reflects light. So, it, you know, it, it has like a reflective element on the inside of it by being white. You know, it's like the difference between having a black wall and a white wall. A white wall would bounce the light around a lot more. So it should help sort of distribute the light it quite evenly on the inside, in here. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what the place looks like when that's, uh, when that's been put up. Um, as I said, I haven't got a clue how long it's going to take to arrive. I only ordered it an hour ago, so, you know, we shall see. But, um, yeah and then um, it can still be treated like the ordinary shade netting I've got, you know, come sort of November time like that, it'll all come off anyway for the winter, so, uh, but I think it should help keep that heat down without having to buy any more electrical units and, you know, which use power and energy and all things like this, whereas this is quite energy efficient, it's a one-off cost if you think about it, so uh, we'll run with that and see how that works. See you next time.